The Red Line project is a series of installations in locations around the world devastated by climate change and men's misuse of the environment. So far, I've installed the Red Line in the sinkholes of the Dead Sea in Israel, burned forests and dry lakes in California, and the melting glaciers in Alaska. I would like to go a few, few years back. My inspiration is still here in my pocket. Okay. This is the twisted balloon that changed my life. As a student of design in a college in Jerusalem, I used to sell twisted balloons to make my living. Back then, in one of my trips to the beautiful Sinai Desert, I played with the balloons with the Bedouin kids. I immediately realized they were seeing the balloons for the first time in their lives. The spontaneous reaction of joy made me ask, what is it about this very simple object that is just shape, color, and air that invites this happy reaction? I found that regardless of culture and language, Children of all ages respond to the balloon in the same way. I realized that the balloon is a very unique and powerful medium of, a, of international language. <laughs> Don't laugh. <laughs> Being an industrial designer, I developed a bigger one, which I also happen to have in my pocket. <laughs> I found it. This small little one actually is uh, eight feet long. To inflate it, I will highly recommend you to use the Bernoulli principle. Just watch me. It occurred to me that this long, narrow tube is actually three-dimensional line that I could draw with on a large scale. So I developed one that is hundreds of feet long, and I started to draw with it using landscapes as my canvas. There's a beautiful word. Please put this sign. There's a beautiful word in, in Arabic and Hebrew, ruach. It has two of the same meanings in both languages, wind and spirit. In my series, Sculpting the Wind, I felt that I'm visualizing the spirit of nature, a dialogue with Mother Nature, a conversation with the wind, sun, and earth beneath them. At Burning Man, I created an installation I called Visualizing a Dialogue Between the Sun and the Wind. The black color tube absorbed the heat of the sun that tried to pull them up while the wind inflating them and animating them horizontally. I tried to defy gravity and make the tube move vertically. That led me to co-invent the dancing inflatables. Here you can see them at the Olympic Games and Super Bowls. With the long, durable tube, I created commissioned art installations worldwide. Here you can see them in New York, in Australia, Dubai, and Japan. But in the last few years, I became more and more attuned to world ecological disasters. I felt that Mother Nature was bleeding before my eyes. I knew that I had to rise to action. I couldn't sit still anymore. I condensed my work down to 500 feet long red tube. I chose the red color as a metaphor for a blood vein. Here you can see the red line in the sinkholes of the Dead Sea in Israel, where the water is receding by about three feet, three vertical feet, every year. In Alaska, the winter temperature is rising by about six degrees, causing the glacier to melt in a very fast pace. At the Salton Sea, a short drive away from Hollywood, pollution turned a beautiful vacation destination into the worst environmental disaster in California.
At the Great Salt Lake in, in Utah, water is receding to all-time low because of failed water management. Dry lakes, burned forests are now everywhere in California after five years of severe drought, intensified by rising temperatures. I'm committed to continue with my project and use my art to draw attention to world ecological disasters. Our battle to protect our environment will have to intensify now. I hope that my art will inspire you to become active and as a group, our voice will sound much louder to protect our fragile environment for the next generations before it's too late. Thank you. So we are going to be taking a revolutionary photo at um, the base of the Centennial Lift. You each have a speaker to help guide you into spelling out the word revolution as it's up behind me. So I'm going to let Duran explain how all of this will work. Each one of you, when you are going out, will get one of these wind tubes. And then, when you're going up, you need to inflate it. And actually, there are three ways to inflate it. You can run with it if you want, if you're not too lazy. <laughs> or you can just move your hands up and down. Or if you're lazy like I am, puff into it, but three inches away. Don't put it over your mouth. Not like this, three inches away. Bernoulli principle. You see, after you blow into it, again, three inches away, you close it with two hands, you push it down, and you make a slip knot. So that in the end of the event, you can just deflate it, put it in your pocket, and go home. Yeah. I'm sure because it's all new to you, some of you will not be able to fully inflate it. So you can also, you can hold it like this, and just bend it and hold it like a baby, hug it. And uh, with John Quigley that is up there, uh, he will give the instructions how to, where to stand and how to hold the inflatables because there will be a lot of aerial photography. Mm -hmm.